In 2015, we created a first prototype of the CTP API, written in Google's Go language. We are using it to test, validate, and fine-tune the CTP API specification. We also used it to create a simple demo that I will now describe to you. We imagined a scenario where a customer, Alice, wants to provision a set of secure blogs with some specific security guarantees, a guaranteed level of SSL TLS encryption, and a guaranteed level of uptime. In order to set the stage for our demo, we need to examine what it means in terms of SLA. Let's first examine Alice's uptime requirements. Uptime, as a metric, is typically expressed as a function of the ratio between the qualified downtime and the total running time of a service. Now let's look at what this means in terms of concrete numbers. If I promise you 99.95% uptime, it means that over 10 days you will experiment at most 7 minutes and 12 seconds downtime, over 10 hours, 20 seconds downtime, and over 10 minutes, just half a second. Now if we lower our expectations, and if I promise you 80% uptime only, it means that you will experiment at most 48 hours of downtime over 10 days, 2 hours of downtime over 10 hours, and 2 minutes downtime over 10 minutes. To illustrate the expressive power of CTP, we will imagine that Alice, our customer, has mixed requirements. She's fine with downtime that does not exceed 7 minutes over 10 days, however, she never wants to experience a service loss that lasts for more than 2 minutes over a period of 10 consecutive minutes. Next, if we turn our attention to the security of the TLS SSL connection, we will use the cryptographic strength of the underlying cryptographic algorithms that are used to secure the connection as our security metric. I'd like to note here that the security of a TLS SSL connection depends on more than just this metric. It does also have to do with implementation issues, for example. But for the purpose of this demo, it will work as a fine example. However, this can get confusing for non-experts because the security of a TLS SSL connection depends not on one, but on several algorithms, each with different bit and key sizes. For example, you will get RSA 1024 bits, AES 128 bits, and a hash function that outputs 160 bits. What we need is a uniform quantitative scale that can be used to compare these algorithms and give a global score to the TLS SSL connection. Luckily for us, it turns out that a project called EUCrypt did exactly that a few years ago. They created a table similar to the following one that says, for example, that a symmetric key of 96 bits is equivalent to a RSA modulus of 1776 bits and a hash function that outputs 160 bits. This gives you a level of 5, or, in other words, a security level that is deemed adequate until the year 2020. We have a level 6 with longer keys that is secure until 2030 and a level 7 that takes us to 2040. These levels give us a convenient metric for cryptographic strength. In this demo we will imagine that Alice is happy with level 6 or above. Now that we have analyzed Alice's requirements in terms of metrics, we can rephrase them more formally in numbers by saying that Alice wants a TLS SSL connection with a cryptographic strength that is greater or equal to 6, and uptime over 10 days that is greater than 99.95%, and over 10 minutes that is at least 80%. Here we have translated security requirements into constraints over quantitative security attributes of a service. And CTP, as an open API, allows a customer like Alice to query a provider about the value of these attributes while the service is running, allowing continuous monitoring of the security level of the service. In this demo, we will imagine that Alice found a provider that is willing to satisfy these requirements. So Alice sets up a secure blog with this specific provider, then maybe she decides to set up a second one. And we can imagine, of course, that there are multiple tenants. So Bob, another tenant, sets up a blog, then maybe a second one. And soon, these uh, customers are monitoring the security level of the service they're offering to their users with CTP. 
in order to simulate a cloud provider that would be able to offer this capability to their customers with CTP, we used the Docker technology, which is a container-based technology. It allowed us a lot of flexibility in creating SSL certificates on the fly, adding customized Apache web configuration, adding software agent for uptime, injecting all in a new Docker container and launching immediately. So basically what we have is a secure blog SaaS interface that runs on top of Docker, Apache Droplet, and an SSL TLS manager, which itself runs on top of the infrastructure. The bottom part of the stack is the responsibility of the provider, while the top part is the responsibility of the customer. We will basically be playing with the bottom part to show faults that could happen on the provider's side and how they can be detected with CTP. From now on, we will pretend to be a cloud provider and use Docker's UE to visualize the containers that have been allocated to our customers. We imagine that Alice is provisioning a set of web servers using this platform. We can see on the screen that she has created three instances, each with a different name. Similarly, if we wait a bit more, we can see that Bob, our second customer, has provisioned two other instances. We can now connect to one of the web servers that Alice has provisioned and see what is happening there. In particular, if we click to visualize the website certificate describing the TLS connection, we will first get a confirmation that we are working with RSA and AES encryption with 128 bits. If we drill down in the certificate, we can see that the RSA public key modulus has a length of 4096 bits. This is very good because this confirms that the cryptographic strength of our TLS connection matches or exceeds the level Alice was requesting. Now we will play the role of Alice the customer. She wants to monitor the service with CTP. She will use the CTP client to connect to the CTP server. Once the client is started, we see a dashboard view of the service. We can see that everything is green, everything is okay. Availability for 10 minutes, 10 hours and 10 days is 100%, everything is all right. And confidentiality of the TLS connection is also all right. The objectives, the promises made by the provider are all true. If we look at the detailed view offered by the CTP client, we can see that Alice has a set of three assets, the three blogs she has provisioned, the three web services she has provisioned. If we look at the first one, we will see that it has two attributes, availability and the confidentiality of the data transfer. The measurement of ability is done every 10 minutes, 10 hours and 10 days. And here on the screen we can see that it is one, which is equivalent to 100% for 10 days, 10 hours, and 10 minutes. And below we see the promise, uh, the commitment made by the provider expressed as um, JavaScript expression. It is true because everything right now is working perfectly fine. If we take a look at the TLS confidentiality level, we will see that the cryptographic strength level is actually seven. Alice wanted six, so this is even better than what she wanted. And the promise made by the provider in the SLA is also true. Everything is all right. Now we will induce a modification of the SSL TLS security by modifying the configuration file of one of Alice's blogs. This simulates a human error or a malicious attack. In practice, here, what we're going to do is replace the cipher suit that is actually currently in the Apache configuration with another one that is of much lower quality that uses simple desk keys of 56 bits. The result of this change is visible immediately in the dashboard. One of the line has changed color and the objective is now false. If we look at the details in the CTP client, and scroll down to the security TLS security level, we see that actually the level has now dropped to one. And this is not in sync anymore with the commitment made by the provider, which is underlined below. The level should be greater than six. So we now know that the objective has failed. 
Next, we will simulate downtime by putting the machine on pause in the Docker UE. This simulates a problem on the provider's side. After a few minutes, the sensors in the network will fail to pick up activity from the instance we paused. The instance's calculated uptime over 10 minutes will slowly fall below the threshold defined in the SLA. This is visible on the dashboard. The line turns into red. The objective is now false. If we take a look at the detail view in the CTP client and we scroll down to the particular instances that has been affected, we can look at the details numbers that are related to availability. We see that the measured value of availability over 10 minutes, 10 hours and 10 days is now not 100% anymore. Over 10 minutes, it is now below 0.8 which corresponds to less than 80%. The objective is not verified anymore. The machine has been down for more than two minutes. If we go back to the Docker UE and unpause the machine, then after a while the sensors in the network will detect activity and the level of ability will go back over 80%. On the dashboard, this will be immediately visible with a change of color. And this pretty much concludes our demo. This video illustrated some of the fundamental concepts of CTP, allowing customers to monitor the security of their service in real-time or near real-time using a standardized API. This typically for customers who have high demands in terms of assurance requirements, transparency and control. For more information about CTP, please follow the links shown on the screen.